we're going to sing unto the Lord. Let's sing unto the Lord with a, a, a song of praise. Amen. With the fruit of our lips. Hallelujah.
Lord Jesus, we need you in the house. We thank you, Lord. We magnify your name. Thank you for your presence here today. Bless us this morning, Lord. Give God some praise this morning. Praise him. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Yes, thank you. God knew what he was doing. He knew we didn't need two fathers. Come on, somebody. Amen. Mother and the father. Yes. Amen. Is it good to know the Savior this morning? Oh, I'm happy. I'm glad I know Jesus. There's a smile on my face. Sing with us this morning if you know the song. The song says, My Redeemer, My Redeemer sent to a rugged cross, sent to a rugged free. cross to save He's my Savior. My Savior bared my sin just to rescue me. My sins just to rescue He's my replacement. My replacement. And he took my place so I wouldn't have to die. So I would have He's to die. my provider. My provider. Now I have everlasting life. Now I have everlasting my life. My redeemer. My redeemer. Sent to a rugged cross. Sent to a rugged, a rugged cross to save. He's my Savior. My Savior. Bared my sin just to rescue me. my sins just to rescue He was my replacement. My and he took my place so that I wouldn't have to die. Place, so I would have and to he's die. my provider. My provider. Now I have everlasting now life. I have everlasting Come life. on, we can all sing this just to know him. Just to know him. Just to know just him. To know what a blessing. Him. He's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Son of the living God. Of the living God. Just to know him. Just to know him. Just to know him. He's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the Son of the Lord. Risen Savior. Risen Savior. Rose from the dead so I could rise again. He's an awesome ruler. Awesome ruler. He was crucified just to call me free. He's our hope of glory. Hope of glory. One day we'll get to see One his face. One day I will get to see his face. I am grateful. I am grateful. He loved me enough. He loved me enough. To gladly take, take my place. Come on, let's all say that this morning. Just to know him. Just to know him. Just to know him. He's Jesus Christ. Jesus Son Christ, of the living God. The Son of the living God. Just to know him. Just to know him. Just to know just him. To know him. He's Jesus Christ, the Jesus Son of the Christ, living God. The of the living God. And oh how he cares. Oh how he cares for you. God cares for you. Cares for you. Oh how he cares. Oh, how he cares for you. Christ cares for you. Cares Oh, how he cares. Oh, how he cares for the you. Father cares for you. Cares for you. Oh, how he cares. Oh, how he cares the Lord cares for you. Cares for you. I don't know why. And I can't explain. It, but victory is won in the Father's only Son. By the Father's only Son. Just to know him. Just to know him. He's Jesus Christ. Jesus Son of the living God. Oh, just to know the Savior. Just to know him. He's Jesus Christ. Son of the living God. Just to know just to know him, Jesus Christ, the Son He's of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. Just to know, just to know him, 
we only have a, few, a short while let's sing it I love you Jesus I worship and adore just want to tell you Lord just want to tell you Lord I love you Lord I love you oh, Lord, Lord, Lord and anything Lord we thank you this morning yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you for your presence. Hallelujah. For our hearts out to you, Lord. Good in the back. Hallelujah. We thank you this morning. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. You can do something. Someone, I thought I would listen to a rap song. Hard to tell the difference these days, but we know what true worship sounds like. And some of this music is geared toward dancing and not worship. And I like to dance, but there comes a time where we want to get geared our mind towards God. And of course, music is an integral part of our lives. Amen. The Bible talks about it, has a whole book in the Bible. The Psalms is centered around songs. Uh, that are provoked and um, talk about the goodness of God, uh, how God has delivered us from our darkest days, amen, and has been our redeemer and our blesser. One psalmist said that promotion, the psalm said promotion does not come from the east or the west, but it comes from God. Um, I sing when I get a promotion. I get excited. I hope you do too. Something to sing about. Hannah sang when she got pregnant. That was something to sing about. Some of y'all sang, was singing then, and now you're crying now. <laughs> With these children, amen. You know, they get out of hand. But we were children once, and we had our day, amen. I thank God for this Mother's Day. My mother's not here, but I, as the Apostle Paul said to the Philippians, he said, I smile with every remembrance of you. And that is my remembrance of my mother. I don't shed no tears. I smile every time I think about her. That is a right attitude for a Christian. We know that our loved ones, if they have put their trust in God or in heaven, they are with the Lord. The Bible says to be absent with the body is to be present with the Lord. When Paul got ready to talk about his departure, he said for me to live as Christ, and I, I, I'm going to live here and serve and minister, but to die would be better. It's gain, he said. So we understand we have a right mind this morning when it comes to mothers, whether she be here or not. So we thank God for a godly mother. We thank God for mothers in general, but there's nothing like a mother who raised us up with a fear and admonition of the Lord. I don't want to talk down verb to any mother, but it is our duty and command to raise our children up the Bible says, train them up in the way they ought to go. And when they're older, they won't forget it. He didn't say they're all going to be saved. He said, you did your part. And God has to do the rest of the part. The person has to do something else. We all got a hand in this thing. Is that okay? And there is a reaction that needs to be made to the message of the, of the Bible. And God's gospel message requires a response. Uh, I heard a message once that mercy requires a response. And that is true. But truly today, the, 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 the great blessing of a family that, that draws the most feeling and emotion is a mother. You know, a father often flies under the radar, Bishop. We say that he gets the big piece of chicken, even though he may be a provider and a godly man and a wonderful husband and a father. A lot of times we don't give him a lot of attention. And I guess he's right where he needs to be because he did not give birth to that child. That nine months that I don't want any part of. Amen. 
I remember when my child was born, they said, you want to come into the room? I said, I'll sit right here outside. And my mother went inside and she told me all about it. She said, thank you, because I didn't want to be in there. I knew how painful it was. I had seen the, I had seen the educational stuff in school. I just trusted God that he was going to bring him on out. Amen. But, but we ought to honor mothers, first off, because of their sacrifice that they give. Uh, we know that that, uh, that position and that condition was given by God in the Garden of Eden that she would have a painful childbirth. But thank God for modern medicine. They got epidurals now. And it's not as painful as it used to be. Come on, ladies. Uh, some of y'all had children and didn't have no epidural. I, I know women who don't want no pain medicine. I said, I, I just want to shake your hand. I, I break a nail and I, I'm looking for some Tylenol. And my wife, she says that she don't take no pain medicine. I'm looking for something every time something happens. So I said, I'm not John Wayne. I need medicine. If something hurts, I'm getting ibuprofen or something. I'm reaching for something. But women are tougher than men. I, we knew that a long time ago. You know, we, they're just tougher than we are. Uh, I didn't say they were stronger, but they're, they're tougher. There's a big difference. There's a big difference. Uh, but anyway, we won't get into that. Today, I just want to minister for a short while um, from the gospel, if you have your Bibles, of Luke, the sixth chapter, uh, verses six through 11. I want to talk about the man with a withered hand. The man with a withered hand. Getting back to this Mother's Day issue, I uh, heard a joke once. A kid asked his father, he said, what is a man, Dad? And, and the dad told him, said, son, a, a man is someone who is responsible and cares for the family. And the kid said to his father, he said, I hope one day I can be a man just like mom. <laughs> can I get an amen, mother? You know exactly what I'm talking about. You get it when you get older. Mothers are funny. My mother was funny. Uh, she was, she, she could be tough, but she was funny. And she would say funny stuff. And, and if I laughed, I would get popped <laughs> by laughing about something funny that she said. She would say stuff like, Johnny, I'm warning you, if you fall out of that tree and break both of your legs, don't come running to me. <laughs> can't come running nowhere. Both of my legs are broke, but I didn't want pop. So I just did quiet. Children are special to us. We spend the first two years of our lives teaching them how to walk and talk. And then we spend the next 16 years telling them to shut up and sit down. <laughs> Thank God for mothers. The Bible gives us a great representation of great mothers. When we talk about Eve, the mother of all humanity, we're talking about a great mother that Though many mothers today, particularly in the black community, have to deal with the death of a child, with these murder rates, just having no disregard for one another. But she dealt with the death of a child as well. From the very beginning, the first family had to deal with strong issues. I think God wanted us to understand that even though you go through stuff, you ain't special, that people have dealt with death, and God brought them through. They've dealt with loss, and God recovered their losses. See, God has been faithful before time started, and he has been faithful to mothers. He has been faithful to fathers. He has been faithful to children. We see women like Rebecca, who God was also faithful to. God is a faithful God. Um, yes. God has been faithful down through the years, somebody said. Uh, Rebecca, Ma Eve, Sarah, uh, Jochebed, the mother of Moses, yeah. Hannah, and, and you may not know the story, but I'm going to talk about it anyway. The mother of the prophet Samuel, Bathsheba, the wife of David, Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, and of course, uh, the most famous mother in the Bible is Mary. The mother of Jesus. And again, Eve, her name means the mother of everything living. 
you understand her to be the first, the first family. We see a portrait of what a family is supposed to look like, what a family endures in the garden. Mother, a father, a husband, and a wife. It's what a family is supposed to look like. God doesn't honor anything else. He created family. A couple men want to be a husband and a wife, then they can't be that in God's eyes because that ain't what God ordained. The Bible says he doesn't repent. He don't have to change his mind. He don't have to go back on his word. I have to repent. I'm a human. But the Bible says God is not a man. He's a son of man that he need to repent. He made man and woman. He made them just like he wanted to make them. If you were calling the Bible, when, he, when Adam started naming all the animals, he named them. Adam named them. But the Bible says if you see a tiger, it's because Adam named it a tiger. Or a buffalo, Adam named it a buffalo. But when he saw Eve, something popped in his head. He said, bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. This is something I can deal with here. He says, it's not an elephant. It's not a snake. I can talk to her. I can get to know her. Eve, the mother of all things living. Uh, then we had Sarah. You know that she was one of the most important women in the Bible. She was the wife of Abraham. And the promises came down to her. But yet, Sarah was not unlike you or I. She had an issue that she needed divine help with. She was bare, and she needed God to move in her life. And we found out that God moved past the normal age in, in, in a logical time that we think or she thought that God could move. Because sometimes God does things in our lives for no other reason so that we'll know that it was nobody but him. If he did it too early now, you would attribute that to your good looks or your degree or fact that you just got it like that so much gain but but sometimes God moves and you ain't got no gain uh, when the clock is ran out and when no one else can move God shows up and, and I thank God for those promises and the Bible says that the promise was so great that Sarah laughed at God then told her God that she did not laugh and God said you indeed did laugh because he knows our heart uh, Rebecca the wife of Isaac was another of the matriarchs in Israel. Um, like her mother-in-law, Sarah, she was barren. And when her husband, Isaac, prayed for her, God opened her womb. Uh, men, don't stop praying for your wife. Don't stop praying for your future wife. That's all that. Yochebed, the mother of Moses, you remember her. Um, she is one of the underappreciated mothers in the Bible, but... She had faith to put her son in the water because of the slaughtering that was going on um, in the land at that time. Uh, a faithful mother. Uh, God allowed her to be rejoined with Moses. And because of Yochebed, Israel was delivered through Moses. Had Moses not been there, Israel, sometimes we don't, we don't give praise all the way down the line. We, we give Moses a lot of credit. But what about Moses' mama who acted in faith to bring him? I heard a man once say, I'm a self-made man, a police officer here in the city. And I just looked at him and I said, you are? How? Where's your mom? She got you here. She, she, she get poured something into your life. But Yochebed did something and she ought to be honored for her faithfulness to God. The Bible speaks powerfully of mothers uh, of today. Remember Hannah, who was praying so hard that, that someone thought she was drunk, I think. That's a hard prayer. We have prayer meeting. We can't get nobody to come out to prayer. We got two or three people to come and pray. Y'all don't pray no more. I don't know where y'all pray at. Maybe y'all praying on the job. Nevertheless, there is a model of what a, a godly praying woman looks like. It was Hannah. Um, you praying so hard that someone thinks you are under the influence of alcohol. You 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 need something from God. Uh, it don't happen all the time, but sometimes you need God to move in your life. Uh, I've got a house, thank God. I get in there and I get going. And I don't even want my wife to hear my prayer when I get going because it's personal. Uh, you know, it's personal. It's just me and God now. 
you can't tell everybody everything. I'm yeah. convinced. And some stuff you just got to get into prayer. Say, God, I need your help today. I'm tired of dealing with this foolishness. And if they think I'm crazy when I'm praying, they just got to think I'm crazy. But God showed his faithfulness to Hannah. And Hannah brought forth a godly son. A godly woman brought forth a godly son. And that was Samuel, who was going to be one of the greatest prophets in the Bible. Uh, we see this play out over and over again, how mothers influence the lives of men. And, you know, we laugh at these NBA players and NFL players as soon as they get big. You now, they get up there and start crying about their mama. But, but I don't think they're soft. I, I think they're, they're honest. That their mother has poured something into them that was special. I still plan to talk about the man with, with the withered hand, but it's Mother's Day, so just bear with me here. <laughs> Bathsheba was special. A lot of times we, we talk about people, but Bathsheba was fine. She, she was fine. The Bible don't have to give all this revelation. I know Bathsheba was fine because David was looking at her. For, he needed binoculars to look at her. You know, man, how y'all do something. Oh, you get to looking and say, Jesus, and then you can't even say it. You just got to say, Lord, have mercy. God is a good God, and he knows how to make them like he makes them. Uh, we might as well be honest in the house of God now. But Bathsheba, sometimes she gets a bad rap because of what David did. And she didn't kill nobody. And he's the king. You just got to go along with me. You're the kings of that day. If I want you, you are mine. Amen. And, and that's just the way it was. But uh, she uh, had to endure heartbreaking circumstances because of her husband. Remember that God put the edict on, on David that the child would not be born because of what David did. Uh, men, fathers, consider your behavior because what we do has an effect on other people. Uh, nevertheless, Bathsheba remained loyal to David. Uh, that's a strong thing to do. Um, it doesn't give us every emotion that she had when David killed her husband. But I, I would assume he had some feelings. Even a bad husband does some good things. I want him gone. Maybe I don't want him dead. I surely don't want him murdered. But she remained faithful to David even throughout all those things. Uh, and because of her faithfulness, she had Solomon, who was loved by God and grew up to become Israel's greatest king. Uh, from David's line would come, and from through Bathsheba would become Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. And this would put her in the distinguished honor of being only one of five women listed in the Messiah's ancestry. Elizabeth was the son of John the Baptist. We always talk about John the Baptist. Little was ever said about Elizabeth. But she raised the son up in the ways of the Lord. Uh, he, of course, had to respond in kind. You know, I remember as a kid, my mother, she would play uh, Bishop Golder, and I'd be right there. Eight years old, I loved the Word of God at eight, nine, ten. I loved when she would get on the piano. It'd be just me and her a lot of times, but we would be listening to the uh, Word of God and playing music. And on Sundays, we really went in. And, and even after my father preached, my, me and my mother still came home and listened to Bishop Golder. <laughs> well, we, we wanted to listen to Bishop Golder because he could preach up a storm. But, but she poured into me everything that I knew that I could not let go of. Uh, I could let go of sports, and I could let go of, of maybe lost hope of an education. Those things were important, but they weren't paramount to who I wanted to be. But she, I kept the things, like John the Baptist kept the things of Elizabeth, um, poured into him, and of course Mary, the mother of Jesus. A lot of times we look down upon women. Who, who don't have a, a man around, who have children. But that such was the case with Mary, even though Joseph, the Bible says, he, he, he wanted to, desire to put her away. He hung around, but you got to have a disconnection because you're pregnant, and we never did nothing. And there's a lot of Jesus, a lot of God out there, but, you know, maybe that's the reason why God shut his mouth and just told him, you can't talk no more. Oh, sorry, that was Zachariah. But nevertheless... My point is this, the, the women down through time have not been void of trouble, they have not been uh, void of hard circumstances, but they have one thing in common, they all trusted God to be their savior, their redeemer, their hope, their comforter, 
their friend in times of trouble. And today, if we don't do anything else, we ought to just thank God. Let's put our hand together now for mothers. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mothers. My mother, your mother, just thank God. He's such a wonderful God. And I thank God for my mother. We can't, we can't say enough. Luke's Gospel 6, 6 through 11. Reads thusly, um, On another Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and was teaching, and a man was there whose right hand was withered. And the scribes and the Pharisees watched him to see whether he would heal on the Sabbath, but, but they might find a reason to accuse him. They were always looking to a snare to get him in trouble. Um, but he knew their thoughts. It's important to understand today that God knows our thoughts. Whatever we're thinking, God knows. We, we haven't fooled him. We haven't tricked him. He, he knows everything uh, that we're thinking. And he said to the man with the withered hand, come and stand here. And he rose and stood there. And Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save a life or destroy it? And after looking around at them all, he said to him, stretch out your hand. And he did so, and his hand was restored. His hand was restored. But they were filled with fear and discussed with one another what they might do to Jesus. We are, we're told today in this story that this man stretched out his hand. He did what God asked him to do in faith. He did not do something else in preference to what God had commanded. Uh, many people today are experimenting with how they're going to be blessed by God and have disregarded what God said and has commanded in his word and are expecting a blessing. But I read somewhere that obedience is better than sacrifice. It doesn't matter how good my action may be. If it is counter to what God has commanded, we might find out that, that the, the withered hand of our condition is, is not being met by God. I'll ask you this question this morning. Have you stretched out your hand? Have you done the very thing that God has asked you to do? 